the pipe organ. Over 2,000 years of innovation and refinement. An instrument which up until the early 20th century was perhaps one of the most complex and technologically advanced inventions of man. A work of art in its own right, these instruments served as the centerpiece for Greek theaters, Roman colosseums, cathedrals, movie palaces, and town halls all around the world. From small chamber organs to large cathedral and concert instruments, the pipe organ has a rich history and each is as unique as the builders who created them and the countries that treasure them. This is the story of the world's largest musical instrument, the Atlantic City Convention Hall Organ. The first time I heard a pipe organ was in the 1950s as a kid. And my question when I heard this was, how do they do that? It's just amazing. A lot of people think a pipe organ is state or maybe church music. Not that there's anything wrong with that. That's really quite beautiful. But they sort of have an idea this is stuffy. And it's not. Most people think the symphony orchestra is a very fine musical medium, and I do too. But the organ has so much more. It goes higher and lower in pitch. It has many more different tones. It can sustain a tone forever. Uh, it's a powerful, exciting, colorful, dramatic instrument. It generally uh, thrills everybody who hears it. The magic of the pipe organ for me is is the depth of the sound, the, the breadth of the sound, the height of the sound, the incredible dimensions of sound that can be brought forth from one instrument. The beauty of the pipe organ is that uh, unlike any other musical instrument, uh, it can move men's souls like nothing else. It gives you a feeling of uh, unequaled power and as you play it, the magic uh, will that you can create with it can make people cry, can make people want to dance, can make people want to march, but it is a very powerful instigator of people's emotions. It can be happy, it can be very sad, can be joyful, can be um, any different emotion that you can think of. There is something about the sound of a pipe organ that strikes people at a, at a visceral emotional level that no other instrument can quite duplicate. I mean, people can be overcome by the beauty of a violin or the human voice or the majesty of an orchestra, but there's something about the pipe organ that it raises the hair on the back of people's necks. The Roaring Twenties an age of promise and prosperity for post-war America. The Charleston, speakeasies, and Model T define popular culture. Chapman and Pickford dominate the silent screen, but entertainment isn't destined to remain silent for long. As radio reaches across the country for the very first time, an unlikely team of organ builders would construct the world's largest and most diverse musical instrument. Atlantic City, known then as the world's favorite playground, would be the instrument's home. This was the place to be and the place to be seen in the early part of the 20th century. There was entertainment for everyone. Diving horses, Broadway-bound theatrical productions, even boxing matches. And what many don't know about Atlantic City's boardwalk was that while it did end up being a great way to get from one attraction to another, it was originally conceived to allow sand to fall between the boards and keep it out of city streets and hotel lobbies. The 1920s was an era limited only by the imagination, and Atlantic City envisioned becoming the meeting place of the nation by building the largest convention hall in the world. It would be an undertaking 
that would put Atlantic City in the nation's spotlight. Boardwalk Hall, as it is known today, still opens right out onto the shores of the Atlantic Ocean. Only now, popular new casino hotels and resorts flank the venerable building, offering new and exciting venues to tourists from all over the world. Visitors walking along the city's four miles of boardwalk are transported back to an era of grandeur and romance. As they pass Boardwalk Hall's massive arched limestone entrance and colonnade. Inside the Great Hall and hidden behind the distant walls and massive grills, the grandest musical instrument ever conceived awaits its reawakening. The Convention Hall's interior is an enormous space. It was designed to seat 41,000 people. The main auditorium itself can easily accommodate two jumbo jets. What's truly wonderful from an engineering point of view is that the, the vast single span roof is actually supported only by the building's walls. There are no pillars, so the view from one end of the room to the other is totally unobstructed. In 1929, this was an absolute state-of-the-art building, a massive room which in a matter of hours could be transformed from a conference centre into a skating rink or a full-size football pitch or even a theatre to name but a few of its uses. Convention halls allowed masses of people to convene from all over the nation in one place and at one time to establish common goals, a firm community, and create a sense of mission and shared ideals. These organizations, affiliations, companies, and church groups were part of a nation that sang. A nation that sang songs of allegiance, dedication, team spirit, and belief. And to motivate, inspire, rally, and excite this many people in this big a space, a heroic and commanding pipe organ would be needed. In those days you didn't have amplification systems that could provide music in these vast sort of spaces and really pipe organs were the only solution. Of course pipe organs and large pipe organs had been built many times before but this hall was different, bigger and therefore the organ needed to be bigger and different too. Filling over nine million cubic feet of space with music, a pipe organ was the obvious solution. But it would be a pipe organ unlike any other. Building an instrument of this size could best be described as a great experiment. An experiment in design, manufacturing, and the large-scale production of tonality. Organ builder Midmer Lash won the bid for construction. Company president Seibert Lash was particularly excited about the project, but for one man, this project was a chance at achieving a dream of a lifetime. World-renowned organ designer Emerson L. Richards. Richards would be remembered as the commander and chief of the American Revolution in organ building. But in those days, he was known by a different title. The chair recognizes the distinguished gentleman